thought I'd do a quick, a quick vlog now, uh, just because I was inspired for a moment by something. I mentioned in other vlogs that I'm, I'm working on a novel at the moment. It's a book I started 18 years ago. And it's not like I've been working on it for 18 years as such. It's like I worked on it for about a year. Other things in my life sort of got in the way and I, I never quite finished the book. I think it's also because I knew where the book was heading. I knew how I wanted it to end. But the, it was the details of the ending. The, the very, very important details that I needed to find that I just couldn't quite put my finger on. Anyway, so I stopped writing it. And every year, about once a year, I would sort of dig it out again and look at bits of it. I've always had a lot of faith in it. It's been like, it's like it's my masterpiece. It's my magnum opus, as they say. I can't possibly evaluate whether it's any good or not. I mean, obviously I think it's good, otherwise I wouldn't be writing it. But in a way, it doesn't really matter if it's any good. You know, the whole point of being a writer is to express yourself. And if nobody reads it, then nobody reads it. That's not really the reason for writing. Where it's set is basically um, my college years when I was studying performing arts at college for two years. And it's about all sorts of different people who who interact within this thing. And it's about the game. I don't know if people know what the game is. If you think about the game, you've lost the game. That's sort of interwoven within the narrative. And I'm just writing this chapter where it's the, they've just done their final show and they're having a big party and it's the last party before they all go their separate ways. And... As I was writing it, I started crying. It made me cry. And not because not because the writing is so brilliantly emotional or anything like that. It's not what I'm implying. And, and you know, I've, I've, I've seen interviews with other writers talk about this. So it's a common thing. It's not just me being a wuss or me being weird or, or my emotion chip is broken or anything. It's that writers get very, very emotionally invested and involved in the work that they create, especially when it's something like this, a novel that I've worked on on and off for 18 years and I'm reaching a point where it's potentially finished and it's 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 upsetting me it's upsetting me because all the characters I've created are now losing each other because they're all drifting off to to do other things to move on to other things and because the the the, the story itself is is finishing off it's an ending that I don't want to happen I don't want to let it go I don't want to let it go and it's it's upsetting me I have a horrible suspicion that with this book in particular, because it's so personal, embarrassingly so, in fact, there's things I've written about in the book that are things that have happened to me that I'm so embarrassed by, but I've I've managed to write about them. Things that in the past, when I think about it, I go, oh my God, did I really do that? <laughs> it's achingly personal. I mean, a lot of it's fictionalised as well. I mean, the, the book is kind of slightly, what's the, oh, what do they call it? What do they call it? High, oh, there's a there's a term for it. When something's not quite real. It's sort of based in reality, but it's not quite real. It's like a heightened reality. High concept. It's a high concept idea. It exists in a universe that doesn't really exist. It's like the time frame of the universe. I was at college in the early 90s. And back then, we didn't have mobile phones, for example. Whereas the, the, the characters in the book, they do have mobile phones. But I don't think... I don't think I mentioned the internet or anything like that. But it does refer to films that were made in the last 20 years. You know, so I've I rather than have to edit out writing that I've done that refers to modern things, I've just simply said, "Well, fuck that." I'm going to give it a, a, a magical no time frame. So it's it sort of like it 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 is in the '90s, but it's also now. It's it's almost like the story. You know, when when you you hear like oh Shakespeare's still relevant now, uh, even though it's written 400 years ago or whatever. And and I guess I'm trying to make the story in itself timeless. By setting it in no specific time, so I mean that's just an example of how how the story is kind of slightly high concept because it's it's not quite in reality, but it does deal with real things, it, you know, love and loss and and friendship and hope and drama and elephants, no elephants. Uh, yeah, so I just thought I would talk about the fact that I'm writing this fucking book, <laughs> and I say that with all the affection in the world. For it, I'm getting actually upset about the idea of finishing it. You know, on the one hand, I say I'm saying, "Oh, I've put so much work into it." You would think I'd be happy for it to be coming to an end, so that I can tie it off and say, "There's my piece of work." But I just, I've got so much more stuff that I can put in. You know, the way the story is structured is that it's got like a beginning. Well, it's sort of got a beginning. <laughs> it's sort of got a beginning. It's definitely got an end, and all the rest is just like. Lots of different stories happening to this group of people. 
it's almost like you know, you know it, it didn't quite work out that way because I don't think it really ever could. But my, my 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 initial idea for the for the for the book was that every chapter you could you could just take the chapter out and read it on its own, and it would be an independent story. So it's almost like a collection of stories, but within a framework. So it means I don't have to ever stop writing new chapters that can go somewhere in the book. You know, the framework is loose enough that I could always add more chapters with more ideas. You know, every chapter is an idea or, or several ideas. And it's not the first time that's happened to me, that, that sort of getting emotional over something I've written. Just because it just happened now, I thought, I'll, I'll talk about that, see if I can figure it out. You know, is, it gonna, is, is that feeling of being upset about ending the, the book going to stop me from ever finishing it? Or maybe I could publish it as a kind of a loose novel and, and publish additional chapters. Why the fuck not? I, I do what I want. Fuck them. <laughs> I read somewhere. I wish. I, I wonder if I've still got that book. Something I read and it was about Beethoven. It was about his life and his, his, his works and all that kind of stuff. And there was one bit in it that really stood out to me and made me kind of think, that's how every artist should act. And somebody says to Beethoven, somebody who's reading one of Beethoven's um, symphonies or something, one of his manuscripts, says, uh, oh, but you can't do that. I mean, I don't know music well enough and can't remember exactly what he was referring to anyway. But he was, he was talking about you, you, you can't do this musical transition here or you can't mix that note with that note or you can't, you know, you can't combine that musical phrase with that musical phrase. I don't know what it was, but he was saying something like that. Some other musician said that to Beethoven on one of Beethoven's pieces. And Beethoven said, yes, I can. I'm Beethoven. So, uh, so that's my sort of attitude to anybody that tells me that I can't do things any way that I want to do them, artistically speaking. In fact, I might actually start saying that. Yes, I can. I'm Beethoven. So I think that's a phrase we should ad adopt maybe in, in, uh, in, uh, in the world. Whenever anybody says you can't do something, just say, yes, I can. I'm Beethoven. It kind of makes me realise that I'm a bit of a hypocrite. That's an announcement I want to make, is that I am a practising hypocrite. And I, I say that as a way of getting out of ever having to answer for anything I ever say. <laughs> so if these videos are seen by somebody and they'll, somebody might comment or somebody in real life might say, but in that video you said blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, don't you know, I'm a practicing hypocrite. And that way you can get away with saying anything. So that's what we've established today. I'm a practicing hypocrite. And yes, I can, because I'm Beethoven. <laughs>